بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس آر فورتھ لیکچر آف مینیجیریل اکنامکس اینڈ آر ٹاپک ٹوڈے از ڈیمانڈ انالیسز بفور اسٹارٹنگ ٹوڈیز لیکچر لیٹ می گیو یو این اوور ویو آف دا لیکچر فرسٹ آف آل وی ول انٹروڈیوس دا کانسیپٹ آف ڈیمانڈ دین دا بیسز فار ڈیمانڈ اینڈ آفٹر دیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو کنسیڈر ڈیمانڈ فنکشن ریلیشن شپ بٹوین ڈیمانڈ کرو اینڈ ڈیمانڈ فنکشن Since the theory of demand, it is uh, behind the theory of demand, it is the theory of consumer choice. We will briefly discuss the theory of consumer choice. And after that, we are going to discuss supply. That is the supply function, supply curve. And uh, um, obviously, uh, to introducing demand function and supply function, we have to consider the equilibrium condition. At the end of the lecture, we will discuss the demand shifters and the supply shifters. and after that a brief analysis of comparative static analysis now uh, the demand concept or the concept of demand is very important uh, in managerial economics because at the heart of the managerial economics is the theory of the firm and at the heart of the theory of the firm is demand without sufficient demand for the product of the firm that it sells in the market it is difficult for the firm to survive in the market if a firm has the most efficient production techniques and it if it has uh, most effective management but if the demand for its product is not there it will not be able to survive in the market many firms new firms jo ke market mein jo nayi firms aati hain agar wo apni demand ka pehle se uh, jo hai uska uh, sara analysis karte hain اگر ان کا یہ انالیسس جو ہے میٹیریلائز نہ ہو یعنی کہ ان کی ڈیمانڈ جو وہ ایکسپیکٹ کر رہے تھے ان کی ایکسپیکٹیشنس کے مطابق نہیں ہوگی تو اس میں کیا ہوگا کہ جو فرم ہے اس کو وہ کلوز ڈاؤن ہو جائے گی کیونکہ اگر اس کی پروڈکٹ کی ڈیمانڈ نہیں ہے تو ظاہر ہے کہ اس کی کاسٹ کورس نہیں کور نہیں ہوں گی اور اس طرح سے اس کو جو ہے اس کی سروائیول مشکل ہو جائے گی سملرلی مینی فرمس وچ آر آلریڈی اسٹیبلشڈ and they are profitable it's quite possible that they have to close down reason kya hai reason ye ho sakti hai ki unki jo product thi market mein uski demand jo hai wo kisi wajah se kam ho gayi hai ya to consumers ne dusri products kharidna shuru kar diye hain jo uske close substitutes hain ya dusri farms ki jo products hain unhone kharidna shuru kar diye hain ya kisi aur wajah se jaise ki consumers ke taste jo hai wo change ho jata hai aur uski product jo hai market mein uski demand kam ho jati hai جس کی وجہ سے کیا ہوتا ہے کہ بہت ساری اس طرح کی اسٹیبلشڈ فرم جو کہ پہلے پروفیٹیبل تھیں اور اسٹیبلشڈ تھیں وہ بھی کلوز ڈاؤن ہو جاتی ہیں دس ان ادر ورڈس مینس دیٹ ایز فر ایز ڈیمانڈ از کنسرن اٹ از اسینشیل فار دا کریشن فار دا سروائیول اینڈ پروفیٹیبلٹی آف دا فرم اس کے ساتھ ہمیں پتہ چلتا ہے کہ ڈیمانڈ کا جو کانسیپٹ ہے وہ فرم کے لیے کتنا زیادہ اہم ہے واٹ از ڈیمانڈ demand is the quantity of a commodity that the consumers are willing and able to purchase during a specified period of time under a given set of economic conditions now we have said that it is uh, both the willingness and ability of the consumer to purchase a product it's quite possible that a student is willing to purchase a laptop but he has not the means to purchase it This means that he is not able to purchase it. So, we don't demand it. For this, we have to say that the willingness is on the part of the consumer and also he, is, he can afford that uh, product. So, we will say that we will demand it. In this way, we have uh, mentioned here time. Without mentioning the time, it becomes meaningless. That is, if we give a statement, uh, the quantity demanded for uh, rice, آف اے ہاؤس ہولڈ ایز ٹوینٹی کے جی تو اس کا کوئی جو ہے مطلب نہیں نکلتا اس کے لیے ہمیں بتانا ہوگا کہ کس ٹائم پیریڈ کی ہم بات کر رہے ہیں دس ٹائم پیریڈ کوڈ بی اے ویک اے منتھ اور اے ایئر سو وی ہیو ٹو یو نو دا اسٹیٹمنٹ از انکمپلیٹ اینڈ وی ہیو ٹو کمپلیٹ دس اسٹیٹمنٹ بائی سینگ دیٹ دا کوانٹیٹی ڈیمانڈیڈ فار رائس ایز ٹوینٹی کے جی پر منتھ آف سچ اینڈ سچ ہاؤس ہولڈ اسی طرح سے ہم نے اس میں ایک اور ٹرم جو ہم نے یوز کی ہے وہ ہے اکنامک کنڈیشنس اینڈ واٹ آر دوز اکنامک کنڈیشنس فار اکنامک کنڈیشنس وی آر ریفرنگ ٹو آل دوز فیکٹرس وچ کین انفلوئنس دا کوانٹیٹی ڈیمانڈیڈ آف اے پروڈکٹ 
वो सारे फैक्टर्स जो हैं उनमें सबसे पहले है प्राइस ऑफ द कमोडिटी प्राइस ऑफ द रिलेटेड गुड्स इनकम ऑफ द कंज्यूमर टेस्ट ऑफ द कंज्यूमर और इसी तरह से हम इसमें और भी जो फैक्टर्स हैं वो इंक्लूड कर सकते हैं डिपेंडिंग ऑन अ स्पेसिफिक यू नो डिमांड फंक्शन बेसिकली देयर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ डिमांड्स दैट इज वी कैन कंसिडर एज टू टाइप्स ऑफ डिमांड मॉडल्स वन इज द डायरेक्ट डिमांड एंड द अदर इज डिराइव डिमांड डायरेक्ट डिमांड इज इट कम्स डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द कंज्यूमर्स एंड वेन दे परचेज दीज प्रोडक्ट्स और सर्विसेज फ्रॉम द मार्केट दे कंज्यूम इट वो डायरेक्टली कंसम्पन के लिए हम उनको खरीदते हैं the basis behind this is uh, what that is the utility the satisfaction that we derive from uh, the consumption of goods and services to so, iske piche jo uh, aap keh sakte hain basis hai demand ka wo kya hai optimization of utility as far as uh, this economic agent that is consumers are concerned unka jo objective hai they want to maximize their total utility and their focus in this uh, regard is on the marginal utility that is the utility that they derive from one additional unit of the commodity on the other hand derived demand that is, that comes for the producer side usme firm jo hai ya jo industry hai uske liye ye derived demand hai jo and this is for the inputs like labor capital machinery ye sari jo uh, inputs hain inko फर्म जो है ये उसकी डिमांड है और इसलिए इसको डिराइव डिमांड कहते हैं बिकॉज इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द डिमांड ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट जो जो भी प्रोडक्ट फर्म जो है वो बना रही है और उसको सेल करना चाह रही है मार्केट में उसके ऊपर डिपेंड करेगा कि उसको ये इनपुट्स जो हैं उसकी रिक्वायरमेंट कितनी है इसलिए इसको हम डिराइव डिमांड कहते हैं बिकॉज इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द डिमांड फॉर द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द फर्म दैट इट वॉन्ट्स टू सेल इन द मार्केट that is why it is called derived demand be it the direct demand or the derived demand the basis behind the direct demand we have seen is the uh, utility optimization on the other hand as far as derived demand is concerned here the basis of uh, the demand is the optimization of profit as far as the firm is concerned firm jo hai jo bhi wo product market mein lekar aa rahi hai उसकी जो डिराइव डिमांड है जो इनपुट्स uh, की डिमांड है वो डिपेंड करती है किस चीज़ पर उसकी प्रॉफिट uh, के ऊपर कि उसको द फर्म बेसिकली इज इंटरेस्टेड टू ऑप्टिमाइज इट्स प्रॉफिट सो दिस मींस दैट बी इट द डायरेक्ट डिमांड और द डिराइव डिमांड इसके पीछे जो बेसिस है दैट इज द सेम दैट इज ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ द कंज्यूमर इट इज ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑफ द यूटिलिटी वाइल ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ द प्रोड्यूसर्स इट इज ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑफ प्रॉफिट इसलिए इसेंशली हम ये कह सकते हैं कि दोनों जो डिमांड्स हैं इसेंशली दे आर द सेम द बेसिस बिहाइंड दीज डिमांड बोथ डिमांड मॉडल्स इज द सेम दैट इज ऑप्टिमाइजेशन वी आर गोइंग टू कंसिडर लॉ ऑफ डिमांड नेक्स्ट एंड यू कैन सी द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द लॉ ऑफ डिमांड ऑन स्क्रीन होल्डिंग ऑल अदर थिंग्स कॉन्स्टेंट देयर इज एन इनवर्स रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द प्राइस ऑफ अ गुड एंड द क्वान्टिटी ऑफ द गुड डिमांडेड पर टाइम पीरियड इसमें आप देख सकते हैं कि हमने ये कहा है कि ऑल थिंग्स होल्डिंग ऑल अदर थिंग्स कांस्टेंट। व्हाट आर दीज अदर थिंग्स दीज अदर थिंग्स आर द फैक्टर्स अदर देन द प्राइस जो भी फैक्टर्स और प्राइस uh, के अलावा हैं जो डिमांड को अफेक्ट uh, कर सकते हैं इनको हमने यहाँ पे अदर थिंग्स कहा है uh, और इनको हम डिटर्मिनेंट्स ऑफ डिमांड भी कहते हैं एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन दैट दीज डिटर्मिनेंट्स और अदर थिंग्स और द फैक्टर्स दैट कैन अफेक्ट the quantity demanded of a product those are the income of the consumer taste of the consumer prices of the related goods and so on we can see that there is an inverse relationship uh, between the price and the quantity demanded that is as far as the price of the commodity itself is concerned there is an inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demanded as price of a commodity falls quantity demanded will increase uh, on the other hand as price of the commodity rises quantity demanded will decline iske isme aap hum dekh sakte hain ki other than price there are other factors jinko hum non price factors bhi kehte hain 
that is when we are considering the relationship between price and the quantity demanded we are assuming that all other factors which can affect the quantity demanded of the product they are held fixed or abhi maine aapko bataya ki wo other factors jo hain ya determinants of the demand kya ho sakte hain as far as this relation inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded is concerned this can be understood by considering the components of the demand curve or demand function law of demand mein humne abhi kaha ki uh, inverse relationship hai between price and quantity demanded aur iski reason kya hai isme jo do components hain wo hain uh, substitution effect and income effect when the price of a commodity falls the consumer tries to substitute this commodity for the other commodities which are now relatively expensive if on the other hand the price of the commodity rises the consumer will substitute away from this commodity and he will try to substitute other commodities for this commodity which is now relatively expensive this is called substitution effect substitution effect is consistent with the law of demand the other effect is the income effect when the price of a commodity falls the income of the consumer that is the money income of the consumer remains the same but actually his real income rises kya hai ki hum ye keh rahe hain ki price jo hai wo fall hui hai price of a commodity x let's say falls then consumer can buy more of this commodity or the other commodities too this in other words means that his real income has increased as a result he can purchase more of this commodity but there are certain commodities uh jinko hum inferior goods kehte hain when the income of the consumer rises what happens that uh, the consumer purchases less of those commodities such as uh, you can say that the cheap uh, food items like potatoes beans and uh, other products unki jo uh, demand hai wo pehle se कम हो जाएगी जबकि इनकम इंक्रीज हुई है और नॉर्मली जो उसका रिएक्शन होना चाहिए वो है कि वो अशिया ज्यादा अशिया खरीद सकता है पहले के नस्बत लेकिन वो इनको पहले से कम खरीदेगा इसकी रीजन क्या है बिकॉज नाउ ही इज ही कैन अफोर्ड मोर क्वालिटी गुड्स दैट इज दो गुड्स आर रेलेटिवली एक्सपेंसिव बट नाउ ही कैन अफोर्ड दो गुड्स तो वो इन प्रोडक्ट्स को जो कि चीप फूड आइटम्स हैं लाइक पोटेटोज हैं या बीन्स हैं या पल्सिस हैं इनको पहले के नस्बत कम खरीदेगा दीज आर कॉल्ड इन्फीरियर गुड्स बट ऑल दो गुड्स द अदर गुड्स उनको हम कहते हैं नॉर्मल गुड्स यहाँ पे जब भी हम वेन एवर वी आर रेफरिंग टू गुड्स एंड सर्विस वी आर रेफरिंग टू बेसिकली नॉर्मल गुड्स जो कि इनकम जैसे कि कंज्यूमर की इनकम जो है वो इंक्रीज करती है तो वो पहले के नस्बत इनको ज़्यादा खरीदता है तो ये नॉर्मल गुड्स हैं जबकि दूसरे गुड्स जिनको वो पहले की नस्बत कम खरीदता है इनकम के इंक्रीज होने पर वो इन्फीरियर गुड्स कहलाते हैं इनकम इफेक्ट इज ऑल्सो कंसिस्टेंट विद लॉ ऑफ डिमांड बट ओनली इफ द गुड इज नॉर्मल नेक्स्ट वी हैव टू कंसिडर द डिमांड कर्व एंड डिमांड फंक्शन अभी जैसे कि हमने कहा कि डिमांड जो है क्वान्टिटी डिमांडेड ऑफ अ प्रोडक्ट इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द प्राइस ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट एंड अदर फैक्टर्स when we draw the demand curve that is um, the relationship between price and quantity demanded so hum kya karte hain ki hum prices jo hain we uh, plot prices against the vertical axis while the quantity demanded or quantities are plotted against the horizontal axis normally aapne dekha hoga ki jo uh, independent variable hai in this case the independent variable uh, variable is the price of the commodity and the dependent variable is the quantity demanded of the product lekin yahan pe normally ye hai ki jo prices hain that is the independent variable they are plotted against the x axis that is the horizontal axis jabki vertical axis pe dependent variable ko plot kiya jata hai lekin yahan pe hum ye keh rahe hain ki hum prices jo hain we are going to plot the prices against the vertical axis and the quantities against the horizontal axis the reason is that this has been a tradition in economics that uh, the both for demand function demand curve and the supply curve prices are plotted against vertical axis uh, we are going to follow the same tradition here to isme jaise ki aap dekh sakte hain screen par demand curve jo hai humne prices jo hain wo vertical axis pe plot ki hain aur iske against jo quantities hain wo 
हॉरिजॉन्टल एक्सिस पे प्लॉट की हैं और जो डिमांड कर्व है दिस इज़ अ लीनियर डिमांड कर्व एंड इट इज़ फॉलोइंग डाउनवर्ड्स द स्लोप ऑफ दिस डिमांड कर्व इज़ नेगेटिव एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन दैट द रीज़न इज द इनवर्स रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द प्राइस एंड द क्वान्टिटी डिमांडेड और ये इनवर्स रिलेशनशिप जो है इसकी वजह से डिमांड कर्व की जो स्लोप है वो नेगेटिव है वाई बिकॉज द चेंज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ चेंज इज डिफरेंट ऑपोजिट है प्राइसिस जब बढ़ेंगी तो आपकी क्वान्टिटी डिमांडेड कम होगी और जब प्राइसिस कम होंगी क्वान्टिटी डिमांडेड जो है वो पहले से ज़्यादा होगी बट दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट ऑल द टाइम वी हैव टू मैंशन दैट अदर थिंग्स आर हेल्थ फिक्सड क्योंकि रियल वर्ल्ड में सारी चीज़ें जो हैं वो चेंज हो रही होती हैं लेकिन हाँ यहाँ पे एस्यूम करते हैं दैट फॉर द मोमेंट ऑल द अदर फैक्टर्स आर कॉन्स्टेंट दे आर हेल्थ फिक्सड The demand curve that we have drawn here is showing the individual demand curve. In order to get the market demand curve, it, it, we simply um, take the aggregate of these uh, individual demand curves. That is, it is the horizontal summation of the individual demand curves. In this slide, you can see that on the uh, upper uh, panel, we can see that uh, there are two demand curves, uh, assuming that there are only two consumers in the market. and uh, then we take the summation the horizontal summation of these two demand curves and we can draw the market demand curve similarly in the uh, lower panel you can see that we have uh, assumed that there are uh, let's say 100 consumers in the market individual demand curve hai jabki right hand side pe market demand curve hai and here you can see the difference between the scale of uh, uh, the individual demand curve and the market demand curve वहाँ पे हमने इसको 100 से मल्टीप्लाई कर दिया है इन ऑर्डर टू गेट द मार्केट डिमांड कर्व नेक्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू सी द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द डिमांड कर्व एंड द डिमांड फंक्शन डिमांड कर्व जब हम ड्रॉ करते हैं तो हम प्राइसेस और क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड्स को जो है ड्रॉ करते हैं क्योंकि हमारे पास हमने ये कहा है कि और भी बहुत सारे फैक्टर्स हैं जो क्वान्टिटी डिमांडेड को अफेक्ट कर सकते हैं बट सिंस वी हैव टू ड्रॉ अ टू डायमेंशनल डायग्राम वी एस्यूम when we draw the demand curve we assume that all the other factors are held fixed while the demand function gives a uh, relationship between all the factors which can affect uh, the quantity demanded of a product to isko hum verbally jo hai wo hum pehle ki tarah hi explain kar sakte hain that there are many factors which can affect the quantity demanded of a product and all those factors are price factor number 1 and the non price factors price factors uh, obviously it's the price of the commodity itself and non price factors ko humne kafi dafa aapko bataya hai that they include income of the consumer prices of the related goods and uh, uh, the taste of the consumer similarly we can also include here the number of the consumers or uh, the expectations on the part of the consumers ye sab factors jo hain jo demand ko possibly affect kar sakte hain demand function mein in sab ko hum jo hai batate hain that is we can verbally explain or express the demand function uh, or we can also express the demand function mathematically isko hum functional form mein bhi bata sakte hain in the functional form we can say that quantity demanded depends on p the price of the commodity uh, price of the related goods let's say price uh, pc that is uh, price of the complementary good uh, ps price of the substitutes in y income of the consumer and so on इसमें जो uh, अभी हमने कहा प्राइस ऑफ द रिलेटेड गुड्स दैट इज आल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर दैट डिटरमिन्स द डिमांड फंक्शन द क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड ऑफ अ प्रोडक्ट राइजेस व्हेन द प्राइस ऑफ अ सब्सटीट्यूट इंक्रीजेस जैसे कि हम uh, देख सकते हैं कि इफ वी कंसीडर दैट देयर आर टू ब्रांड्स ऑफ टी इन द मार्केट द प्राइस ऑफ द ब्रांड वन इंक्रीजेस वॉट विल हैपन द कंज्यूमर विल शिफ्ट देयर डिमांड टूवर्ड्स द ब्रांड टू because now this is relatively cheaper but if the price of tea uh, rises in general sub brands ki jo hai price jo hai wo increase kar jati hai to is uh, surat mein uh, the consumer will try to substitute it for the closest substitute jaise ki maybe tea ke uh, liye chai ke jagah wo ab coffee ko uh, isko substitute karna shuru kar de so isme ye hai ki jab aap jab substitute ki price jo hai वो इंक्रीज कर जाती है तो क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड जो दूसरा सब्सटीट्यूट है उसकी ज़्यादा हो जाती है ऑन द अदर हैंड कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री गुड्स जो हैं दोज गुड्स आर यूज टुगेदर 
जबकि सब्सटीट्यूट गुड्स हैं जो जो कि हम एक कमोडिटी को दूसरे से रिप्लेस कर सकते हैं लेकिन जो कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री गुड्स हैं उनको हम इकट्ठे यूज़ कर सकते हैं जैसे यूज़ करते हैं जैसे कि आप एग्जांपल ले सकते हैं टी एंड शुगर और टी एंड मिल्क तो इसलिए इनमें से जब एक चीज़ की प्राइस जो है लेट से द प्राइस ऑफ मिल्क राइजेज वॉट विल हैपन दैट इट्स नॉट ओनली द क्वान्टिटी डिमांडेड फॉर मिल्क विल decline but also the quantity demanded for tea will decline this is how the price of the related goods affect the demand for a product abhi humne individual demand curve ki baat ki hai aur phir isse humne market demand curve derive kiya now the our primary uh, focus is on the firm's demand curve kyunki uh, firm jo hai as i have said earlier with the theory of firm or the firm's demand curve is the most important from the managerial perspective Uh, the firm's demand curve depends on uh, two factors one is the size of the market uh, how many firms are there in the market and the other is market structure size uh, of the market jo hai depend karega ki kitni firms jo hain wo market mein hain and the other important uh, thing is the market structure basically there are four types of market structures that is monopoly perfect competition oligopoly and monopolistic competition if the firm is uh, a monopoly that is if the firm is a monopolist the sole producer of the product then it is a monopoly which is rare in the world lekin iski bahut si examples jo hain hum le sakte hain that is uh, the uh, local telephone company public utilities like uh, water electricity and similarly public transportation monopoly uh, की सूरत में क्या है कि एक फर्म है और इसमें जो डिमांड कर्व फर्म फेस करेगी दैट इज अ डाउनवर्ड स्लोपिंग डिमांड कर्व एंड इट हैज अ कंप्लीट कंट्रोल ओवर द प्राइस ऑफ द कमोडिटी ऑन द अदर एक्सट्रीम देयर इज परफेक्ट कंपटीशन इन दिस केस देयर आर अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ सेलर्स बहुत सारे इसमें सेलर्स हैं बहुत सारी फर्म्स हैं and they are producing a homogeneous commodity that is a commodity which is uh, exactly similar in this case the firm has uh, firm has no uh, uh, control over the price of the commodity and in this case the firm is facing a horizontal demand curve so is surat mein ye hai ki um, at a given price in this case the firm is a price taker it has no control over price at a given price the firm can sell any amount of the commodity this also this form of the market structure is also rare in its um, you know uh, in its uh, complete form it is rare lekin iske liye bhi hum example bahut sari de sakte hain from the real world for instance thousands of the farmers who are producing a similar type of uh, wheat or rice th- this can be given as an example of perfect competition Be- uh, between these two extremes there are the two other market structures that is oligopoly and monopolistic competition in case of oligopoly there are few sellers producing either a standardized or homogeneous product or uh, they are producing a standardized product the products are similar uh, but th- it is also possible that they are producing differentiated products that is heterogeneous products unki jo commodities hain वो डिफर करती हैं इन डिज़ाइन कलर और मे बी इन क्वालिटी इन दिस केस एज आई सेट अर्लियर दैट दिस द नंबर ऑफ सेलर्स इज फ्यू इसमें जो इसकी इम्पॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक है वो ये है दैट दे आर इंटर डिपेंडेंट दैट दीज फॉर्म्स आर इंटर डिपेंडेंट दे कैन रिटेलिएट टू ईच अदर एंड दे कैन ऑल्सो इमिटेट द प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ द अदर फॉर्म्स इसमें ये कि जब वो स्टैंडर्डाइज्ड प्रोडक्ट्स सेल कर रहे होते हैं तो जैसे कि हम एग्जांपल दे सकते हैं यहाँ पे सीमेंट है स्टील है और या केमिकल्स हैं और दूसरी सूरत ये हो सकती है कि दे आर दैट दे आर प्रोड्यूसिंग हेट्रोजेनस प्रोडक्ट्स दैट इज देयर प्रोडक्ट्स आर डिफ्रेंशिएटेड लाइक वी कैन गिव हेयर द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ कॉस्मेटिक्स सिगरेट्स एंड सॉफ्ट ड्रिंक्स इसमें यह है कि जैसे आप कोक और पेप्सी पेप्सी को ले सकते हैं कि इसमें वो काफ़ी हद तक सिमिलर हैं लेकिन डिफ्रेंशिएटेड भी हैं देर आर सर्टन कंज्यूमर्स हु विल जस्ट हु विल ओनली बाय कोक दे विल प्रेफर दे विल ऑलवेज प्रेफर कोक ओवर पेप्सी तो ये डिफ्रेंशिएटेड प्रोडक्ट्स हैं और इसमें जो फर्म्स हैं एक दूसरे के ऊपर इंटर होती हैं इसमें भी जो डिमांड कर्व है बेसिकली दैट इज़ डाउनवर्ड स्लोपिंग 
uh, the demand curve that a firm faces that is downward sloping. The other uh, form of the uh, market structure is monopolistic competition. As the name indicate, uh, indicates, it has both the uh, element of uh, monopoly and the element of competition. The element of monopoly comes from the factor that here again, um, the products which the firm is producing, they, uh, these products are differentiated. They are somewhat differentiated. Since the products are differentiated, therefore, they have a control over the price of the product. The element of competition comes from the fact that the number of sellers is quite large. Since the number of sellers is quite large, therefore, um, the demand curve that the firm faces here is, although it is uh, downward sloping, but it is fairly flatter than the demand curve which is faced by the firm in uh, the, uh, in, under monopoly or under oligopoly. So, this flatter is that if the firm will change the price in the price, then the quantity demanded will be very change. So, although the firm has a control over price, but uh, uh, a slight change in price, uh, as a result of slight change in price, it will lose a large number of uh, customers. So we have seen that under all these market structures, except the perfect competition, the firm faces a downward sloping demand curve. Uh, it's only the perfect competition, under the perfect competition, the firm faces a demand curve, which is a horizontal demand curve. In um, addition to the market structure, another important factor uh, which can influence the demand curve that a firm faces is the durability or non-durability of the product that it sells in the market. If the firm is producing a non-durable commodity such as bread, butter or other groceries, then it, the demand curve that it faces is fairly stable demand curve. On the other hand, if it is producing a durable commodity such as uh, washing machines, split ACs or uh, uh, automobiles, then it faces a fairly uh, uh, volatile uh, demand curve, that is the demand curve in that case is unstable. Uh, iski reason kya hai? The reason is the, that uh, the quantity demanded or demand for the durable products uh, that can be, you know, hold, uh, the consumer can hold their consumption for these commodities. Jaise ke many abhi example di washing machine ki ya um, automobile ki, to iske liye ye hai ke agar prices jo hai in general uh, is waqt zyada hai, Presently, so uh, consumers, jo hain, they would like to wait to decline the prices. Is ke lawa, consumers, jo hain, wo ye bhi intezar karte hain ke uh, prices jo ek to kam honi ka intezar karenge aur iske lawa, wo ye bhi dekhenge ke koi credit incentive jo hai firm ki taraf se agar unko milta hai, to uska bhi wo wait karenge. So, is surat mein jo demand curve hai, jo firm face kar rahi hai, wo itna zada stable nahi hoga as compared to the uh, demand curve for the non-durable commodities. For this, we have seen the demand curve hai, wo depend on the market structure and the other is that the product is durable or non-durable. Next, we have to consider the difference between the change in quantity demanded and change in demand. And for this purpose, you can see the demand function which is given on screen here you can see that quantity demanded for a commodity X depends on the price of X, N, the number of consumer, I, consumer's income, P, Y, prices of related goods, and T stands for consumer's taste. When uh, we consider the relationship between quantity demanded of product X and its price, that is, and, uh, that is shown on a single demand curve. Isko hum ek demand curve pe show karenge. And if there is a change in price, as a result, there will be a change in quantity demanded. That change is uh, shown on the same demand curve. That is, we move along the same demand curve. On the other hand, if there is a change in one of the factors, which are non-price factors, like income of the consumer or prices of the related goods or taste of the consumer, um, when one of these, one or more of these changes this will bring about a change in demand. That is called change in demand and as a result, the entire demand curve 
विल आइदर शिफ्ट टूवर्ड्स राइट और टूवर्ड्स लेफ्ट इसमें यह है कि यहाँ पे हम डिमांड शिफ्टर्स की बात जो है वो कर रहे हैं ऑल दोज फैक्टर्स विच कैन शिफ्ट द इंटायर डिमांड कर्व आइदर अपवर्ड्स और डाउनवर्ड्स दे दीज आर द फैक्टर्स विच कैन इन्फ्लुएंस द डिमांड एंड वी हैव सीन दैट दीज फैक्टर्स आर प्राइस ऑफ द रिलेटेड गुड्स इनकम ऑफ द कंज्यूमर एंड ऑल्सो द टेस्ट ऑफ द कंज्यूमर वी कैन इंक्लूड अदर फैक्टर्स इन दिस डिपेंडिंग ऑन आर स्पेसिफिक डिमांड फंक्शन दिस मीन्स दैट देयर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ क्वान्टिटी डिमांडेड एंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डिमांड इन दिस केस जिसमें कि हम चेंज इन क्वान्टिटी डिमांडेड जो है दैट इज रिलेटेड टू द प्राइस ऑफ द कमोडिटी बट चेंज इन डिमांड इज रिलेटेड टू द नॉन प्राइस फैक्टर्स सो दिस दिस डिफरेंस मस्ट बी क्लियर इन इन द माइंड ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स ऑब्वियसली एंड ऑल्सो द फर्म शुड क्लियरली बी कॉन्शियस अबाउट दिट दिस के जब तो प्राइस को चेंज करेगा तो क्या होगा uh, उसका इम्पैक्ट डिमांड के ऊपर और जब वो अदर फैक्टर्स में चेंज आएगा जो कि उसके कंट्रोल में नहीं है तो उसके उसका असर जो है उसके डिमांड पर क्या होगा तो दिस हाउ वी कैन सी द डिफरेंस अलॉन्ग दैट डिफरेंस बिटवीन द मूवमेंट अलॉन्ग द सेम डिमांड कर्व एंड द शिफ्ट ऑफ द डिमांड कर्व इन दिस लाइट लीनियर डिमांड फंक्शन इज गिवन एंड हेयर वी कैन सी दैट द डिमांड फंक्शन फॉर गुड एक्स अगेन इज गिवन इन जनरल टर्म्स दैट क्यू एक्स इज इक्वल टू ए ओ प्लस ए वन पी एक्स प्लस ए वन ए टू एन प्लस ए थ्री वाई प्लस ए फोर पी वाई एंड प्लस ए फाइव टी then a specific demand function is given or isme hum dekh sakte hain ki the demand function qx equal to 160 minus 10px plus 2n plus 0.5y plus 2by plus t the demand curve for good x is derived by assuming that n is constant that the level of all these determinants of demand are constant n equal to 58 y equal to 36 that is the income of the consumer is 36 and py is 12 taste is 112 as a result we get the quantity demanded which depends on the price and the demand function is now equal to q equal to 430 minus 10p but we must remember that when we say that qd or q is equal to 430 minus 10p implicit in this statement is Uh, the fact that there are other factors which can influence the demand curve and we are holding them constant for the moment and we have said that uh, all these factors that is number of com- consumers n p by the price of the related goods i the income of the consumer t the taste uh, and preferences of the consumer they are all held fixed at a certain level we have substituted all these values into the demand function and we have obtained this demand function which is now saying that quantity demanded of a product x depends on its price if you are given the demand function in this format that is quantity demanded is a function of price here we can see that q is equal to 430 minus 10p the inverse of this demand curve is price function that is p is equal to 43 minus 0.1q we have obtained this demand curve by expressing demand curve in terms of q when we say q is equal to 430 minus 10p we are expressing the demand function in terms of p and when we express it in terms of q this this becomes the price function or the inverse of the demand function p is equal to 43 minus 0.1q now look at q equal to 430 minus 10p the minus 10p Minus ten is this is attached with the negative sign, which shows that there is an inverse relationship between price and the quantity demanded of the product. The inverse demand function, on the other hand, is forty three minus point one q. So, is me or us me? क्या फर्क है कि यहाँ पे हमने उसको in terms of q express किया है, but we can also see that this is the price function, which in other words means that this is the average revenue. If we are given the demand function. we can find its inverse function and we have price function as a result we have price function so that we can now find the total revenue because we know that total revenue is price times quantity so if price is given we simply multiply it by q and we get the total revenue then by differentiating this we can find the marginal revenue function behind the demand curve or the theory of demand it's the theory of consumer choice 
therefore we are going to explain briefly the theory of consumer choice and here we will derive the demand curve for a commodity from this concept. Theory of consumer choice in this slide you can see the indifference curves labeled as U1, U2 and U3. Is pe hum isko briefly jo hai aapko batayenge because you are all familiar with the indifference curve, the budget line and uh, here uh, I, I would derive the demand curve for a commodity X or Y. Now given this uh, indifference uh, curve map we can see that the indifference curves are labeled U1, U2, U3 that is they are showing different level of satisfaction but it's only the ordering or we have here explained yahan pe humne usko ordinal jo hai tarika use kiya hai cardinal nahi hai that is we are not going to measure the satisfaction the level of satisfaction it is something which is subjective therefore we cannot quantify these uh, the level of satisfaction that a consumer will derive from each of these in different curves all we know is that the satisfaction or utility derived from U3 is greater than uh, U2 and uh, the satisfaction or utility derived from U2 is greater than U1. So it's showing different levels of satisfaction. On the other hand, if we look at the indifference curve U1, the consumer is getting the same level of satisfaction at different points. That is, he is indifferent between different combinations of good X and Y. For the sake of simplicity, we have assume that there are only two goods in the market and the consumer is spending all his income on X and Y, on different combinations of X and Y. If we look at the indifference curve U1, we can see that uh, there, is, uh, there are three different points A, B and C. At point A, the consumer is consuming one unit of X and four units of Y. At point B, it's 2 units of X and 2.5 units of Y. In order to get an additional unit of X, consumer is willing to give up 1.5 units of Y. But look at point C. At that point, in order to get an additional unit of good X, he is willing to give up only 0.5 units of Y. This is uh, called marginal rate of substitution of X for Y. That is, he is substituting X for Y because we have assumed that the two goods that we are considering are substitutable. They are neither perfect substitute. Here, we should be clear about this, that they substitute kar sakta hai, but they are not perfect substitutes. In this slide, we can see that uh, when the two goods are perfect substitutes, then the uh, indifference curve will not be, uh, will be a linear uh, curve. That is, you can see that there is a series of linear uh, uh, curves, the downward sloping linear curves. On the other hand, if they are um, complementary, that is, they are perfect complements. Uh, when we say that they are perfect substitute, we can perfectly substitute one good for the other. You can take the example of, uh, let's say, an old car and a new car. Unki functionality jo hai wo same hai aur uska jo purpose hai wo usse pura ho jata hai. Isliye ek car ko wo dusre car se substitute kar sakta hai. But this is an example of perfect substitutes. Perfect complements ki jo, uh, uh, lekin agar wo uh, jo ek dusre ke saath, uh, ek dusre ke saath substitute nahi ho sakte, to wo uh, perfect complements hai. You can take the example of extreme, an extreme example here, that is uh, on the x-axis if we, if we are considering the uh, right shoe and on the uh, y-axis left shoe. Ab right shoe or left shoe dono jo hai hum ikatthe istemal karte hai. Uh, so that is why they are uh, perfect complements. Uh, we, we always use them together. We cannot replace one shoe for the other. So this is an example of perfect complements. On, uh, but in case of indifference curve, we have said that we, the consumer is consuming these two products, X and Y, which are substitutable. They are neither perfect substitutes nor perfect complements. This means that the consumer can uh, substitute one product or one commodity for the other. But as I said earlier that this uh, substitution, it, it is called marginal rate of substitution and it is not constant. It, it, uh, as we move along the same indifference curve, this marginal rate of substitution of one commodity for the other diminishes. As uh, we have seen here that at point A he was willing to 
uh, in, in order to uh, get uh, at point B from A, in order to move from point A to B, he was willing to uh, give up 1.5 units of Y for one additional unit of X. But at point C, we have seen that he is willing to give up only 0.5 unit of Y in order to get a one additional unit of X. This means that marginal rate of substitution is diminishing, it is declining. And this is the slope of the indifference curve. So marginal rate of substitution is um, a ratio of marginal utility of X by marginal utility of Y. It is attached with a negative sign indicating that indifference curve has a neg negative slope. The slope hai indifference curve ki wo negative hai. Uh, why? Be the reason is that the marginal rate of substitution is falling. We can see here uh, in the slide that slope of an indifference curve that is dqy by dqx is equal to minus and that is negative of the ratio of marginal utility of x by marginal utility of y. In one of our previous lectures we have seen that the consumer optimizes his or her utility subject to some constraint. Now in this case obviously the constraint is the budget constraint. In mathematical symbols, the budget constraint can be given as m equal to price of x multiplied by quantity of x plus price of y multiplied by quantity consumed of y. This can also be expressed as uh, py qy equal to m minus price of x quantity of x. So that we get as a result, now we can express the budget line as qy equal to m by py minus price of x by price of y times quantity of x. So here we can see the slope of the budget line. This we have budget line in this format and here we can see the slope of the budget line that is dqy by dqx is equal to negative of the ratio of price of x and price of y. This is the slope of the budget line. In this slide we can see that we have three budget lines. First is we assume that the income of the consumer is six dollars per week and here the price of the two commodities that is price of x and price of y are given as one dollar per unit and this is shown by the budget line gf the budget line which is labeled gf here you can see if a consumer spends all his income on a good x that is commodity x he can purchase six units of x if on the other hand he spends uh, his entire income on commodity Y, he can purchase six units of commodity Y. This is labeled as G and F. We join these two points and we get a straight line, which is the budget line of the consumer. Now, assuming that price of one of the commodities change, price of X, let's say, is now $2 instead of $1. What will be the result? The result will be that now the consumer will be able to purchase only three units of commodity X if he spends his entire income on commodity X. So that now by joining G F prime, we get the new budget line, which is uh, G F prime. If on the other hand, the price of commodity X, it falls to 0.67 dollars instead of one dollar. Now this is indicated by uh, another budget line, which is labeled as G F double prime. Now, utilizing our information of the budget line and the given uh, utility function, we can find the equilibrium point, uh, that is the, uh, where the consumer is at equilibrium. And this point is obtained where the budget line touches the highest possible indifference curve. Consumer equilibrium, we can see that it is a combination of goods that maximizes utility for a given set of prices and a given level of income. Graphically, this can be represented by the point of tangency between an indifference curve and the budget line. Mathematically, we can say that it is the point where the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget line. That is, the ratio of marginal utility of X by marginal utility of Y is equal to the ratio of the prices of the two commodities, that is, price of X by price of Y, which can also be expressed as marginal utility of X by price of X equal to marginal utility of Y by price of Y. In this slide, you can see the consumer's equilibrium. 
Here, the budget line is tangent to the consumers, uh, to one of the indifference curve, which was the highest possible indifference curve. And in this case, it is tangent to the indifference curve. The budget line is tangent to the indifference curve at point E, where the consumer is consuming 3 units of X and 3 units of Y. We can mathematically derive the same result here, assuming that we are given utility function, which is to be maximized. That is u equal to, u is a function of quantity of x, y. Again, we are considering a two commodity model. That is, we are assuming that there are only two commodities in the market and the consumer's uh, income is given and the subject to the budget constraint. Consumer has to optimize this utility function subject to his budget constraint, which is equal to m equal to price of x times quantity of x plus price of y times quantity of y. In our, one of our previous lectures, we have seen that uh, the constraint or optimization, that is, we have uh, uh, optimized or we have maximizes a function subject to some constraint. And for that purpose, we have used two methods, that is, substitution method and Lagrangian function method. We are going to uh, use here Lagrangian method. We set up our Lagrangian function, that is, the original utility function plus lambda times the budget constraint. Once we set up this Lagrangian function, we differentiate this Lagrangian function with respect to x, with respect to y, and with, this, with respect to lambda. For our first order condition, we set all these first partials equal to zeros so that we get the critical point. And in this case, we solve this equation simultaneously. As a result, we get lambda equal to marginal utility of x by price of x equal to marginal utility of y by price of y. This means that we solve these equations simultaneously and we get the tangency condition. That is the point where the budget constraint is tangent to the highest possible indifference curve. And that is the point where the slope of the indifference curve is exactly equal to the slope of the budget line. Slope of the indifference curve, as we have seen, it is the marginal rate of substitution, that is the negative of the ratio of marginal utility of x by marginal utility of y, whereas the slope of the budget line is negative of the ratio of the prices of the two commodities, that is price of x by price of y. In the next slide, we are going to derive the demand curve for a commodity, in this case for commodity x. We have already seen that when the price of a commodity changes, the budget line also changes. Here we have uh, plotted the same three budget lines, that is GF, GF prime, GF double prime. In the top panel, you can see that these three budget lines are given. And uh, uh, for each of these budget lines, we can see the uh, point of equilibrium, that is the point where the consumer is at equilibrium. So we can see that we have the budget line GF prime. Here, uh, we can see point A where the highest possible indifference curve is tangent to this budget line. This point A is located in the lower uh, panel where it is uh, labeled as A prime. Similarly, uh, here you can see the second budget line hai, which was the original budget line. Uh, mein, yahan pe consumers are in uh, equilibrium when they are uh, 3 units uh, commodity X and 3 units commodity Y. This, this is shown by point E and this point corresponds in the lower panel uh, by E prime. Similarly, we have another point on the budget line G F double prime and that is point H. This corresponds to H prime in the lower prime. We join all these points that is A prime, E prime and H prime. As a result, we get the quantity demanded for the commodity X. We have here simply a change. Here we have done we have an example in which we have said that money income of the consumer is $6. और प्राइसेस जो हैं कमोडिटीज की वो वन डॉलर ईच हैं। फिर हमने जो कमोडिटी एक्स है उसकी प्राइस में हमने चेंजेस की। पहले हमने ये देखा कि अगर प्राइस जो है वो इंक्रीज करे या प्राइस जो है इसके बाद हमने डिक्रीज की। डेट इस पॉइंट सिक्स सेवेन डॉलर्स इंस्टेड ऑफ वन डॉलर। सो डेट दिस स्लोप ऑफ़ द बजट
और इसके नतीजे में हमने देखा कि यहाँ पे हमने डिमांड कर्व फॉर कमोडिटी एक्स जो है वो डिराइव किया है इसी तरह से हम कमोडिटी वाई के लिए भी डिमांड कर्व जो है इंडिविजुअल डिमांड कर्व डिराइव कर सकते हैं बाय चेंजिंग द प्राइस ऑफ द नाव कमोडिटी वाई इंस्टेड ऑफ कमोडिटी एक्स तो इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी हैव सीन दैट वी हैव डिफाइंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डिमांड एंड वी हैव सीन दैट इट इज एक्सट्रीमली इम्पॉर्टेंट for the theory of firm and uh, we also know that, that the theory of firm is the central theme of the managerial economics we have seen different uh, uh, concepts that is the direct demand derived demand or iske baad humne uh, consider kiya the individual demand curve and uh, from individual demand curve we have derived market demand curve but primarily we are interested in the demand curve which is faced by the firm उसमें हमने जो है देखा कि डिमांड कर्व जो एक फर्म फेस करेगी दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन द टाइप ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट दैट द फर्म इज प्रोड्यूसिंग वेदर इट इज ड्यूरेबल कमोडिटी और अ नॉन ड्यूरेबल कमोडिटी देन नेक्स्ट वी हैव सीन दैट एज पर एज द डिमांड कर्व फेस बाय अ फर्म इज कंसर्न इट इज बेसिकली इट विल डिपेंड ऑन द टाइप ऑफ द मार्केट स्ट्रक्चर इन विच द मार्केट इन विच द फर्म इज ऑपरेटिंग तो इसके लिए हमने देखा कि देर आर बेसिकली फोर टाइप्स ऑफ मार्केट स्ट्रक्चर्स मोनोप्लिस्टिक कंपटीशन, ऑलिगोपली मोनोपली एंड परफेक्ट कंपटीशन। इन एडिशन टू दिस वी हैव डिफाइंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लॉ ऑफ डिमांड डिमांड कर्व डिमांड फंक्शन एंड आल्सो वी हैव कंसिडर्ड इन डिटेल द डिटर्मिनेंट्स और द फैक्टर्स दैट कैन इन्फ्लुएंस डिमांड अदर देन प्राइस the basic uh, or the most important factor that determine the demand is obviously the price of the commodity but there are other non price factors which we have considered in detail that is the consumer's income consumer's tastes and prices of the related goods we have briefly explained um, the theory of uh, consumer that is uh, uh, we have introduced briefly इन डिफरेंट स्कर्व और उसमें हमने देखा वी हैव ऑल्सो एक्सप्लेन मार्जिनल रेट ऑफ सब्सटीट्यूशन एंड ऑल्सो द बजट लाइन फिर हमने इन इसमें हमने जो है कंज्यूमर इक्लिब्रम को डिस्कस किया वी हैव ऑल्सो गिवन एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ कंस्ट्रेंट ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑफ यूटिलिटी फंक्शन दैट इज द यूटिलिटी फंक्शन इज गिवन एंड द बजट कंस्ट्रेंट इज गिवन एंड वी हैव ऑप्टिमाइज द यूटिलिटी um and uh, ultimately we have solved it and we have seen graphically that this is we have derived there the tangency condition that is the point where the highest possible indifference curve is tangent to the budget line of the consumer and this is how we have shown the consumer's equilibrium from uh, this analysis we have also derived by changing the price of one of the commodities we have derived the demand curve for that commodity the individual demand curve has been derived similarly we can derive the demand curve for the other commodity by changing its prices with that we come to an end of today's lecture thank you safis